Tornadoes. Over a thousand occur in the United States every year, and hundreds more occur across North America. A handful of those every year unfortunately turn deadly. So let's have a look at the deadliest tornado from every year, from 1950 all the way to the present day here in 2023. I would be covering tornadoes specifically in North America, because if I included the world as a whole, it would be a lot more research, and it would only matter for a couple of years. But let's waste no more time and start with 1950, and the deadliest tornado of the year would be on the 12th of February, and it would impact Shreveport, Louisiana at F4 intensity, sadly killing 18 over an 82-mile path through northwest Louisiana. 1951's deadliest tornado came on September 26th, as an F4 tornado would track for 26 miles north of Wapaka, Wisconsin, killing six people. For 1952, the death count rises, as on March 21st of 1952, a tornado would impact areas of Searcy to Bald Knob, Arkansas, over a 14-mile path, unfortunately causing 50 fatalities. This tornado would be rated F4. For 1953, there's two incredibly notable and deadly tornadoes I'm going to mention. The first is the well-known May 11, 1953 Waco, Texas F5, which caused 114 deaths as the tornado tracked 20 miles right through the city. The second and slightly deadlier tornado would be the notorious June 8, 1953 Flint, Michigan F5, which would result in the deaths of 116. But let's move on to 1954, where the deadliest tornado would be the May 20th, 1954 Norfolk, Nebraska tornado, and it would kill six. Moving on to 1955, we have another very deadly and notable tornado in the May 25th, 1955 Udall, Kansas F5 that killed 80 people throughout its very strange 56-mile path through Oklahoma and Kansas. 1956's deadliest tornado would be the April 15th, 1956 Birmingham, Alabama F4 that would end up killing 25 over a 21-mile long stretch of destruction. 1957's is the May 20th, 1957 Ruskin Heights, Missouri F5 that killed 44. 1958's deadliest tornado would be the June 4th, 1958 Cedar Falls, Wisconsin F5 with 21 deaths. And the deadliest tornado of 1959 would be the February 9th, 1959, St. Louis, Missouri, F4, which also had 21 deaths. Now, the deadliest tornadoes of 1960 and 61 have the same death count, but also the same day, and almost the exact same location. As on May 5th, 1960, an erratic F4 tornado would impact Wilburton, Oklahoma, killing 16. And the next year, just 18 miles away from the previous tornado's touchdown point, Another F4 would occur on May 5th, this time impacting places around Tallahena, Oklahoma, and fortunately also resulting in 16 deaths. 1962 brings us to Florida, as on March 31st of 1962, near Milton, Florida, an F3 would track 6.9 miles through the Florida city of Milton, tragically resulting in the deaths of 17. 1963's deadliest tornado would also be an F3 that came on the 29th of April, 1963, impacting areas around Moon Lake, Mississippi, killing five over a five-mile path. 1964's deadliest tornado would be a part of a collection of a dozen tornadoes that would be spawned by Hurricane Hilda from the 3rd to the 4th of October, 1964. One of these tornadoes would only track for 1.5 miles through an area north of the city of La Rose, Louisiana, Yet, it would be rated F4, it would unfortunately end the lives of 22 people during its short life. The tornado would injure an additional 165, as it impacted 35 homes, causing debris to be found up to 16 miles away from the affected areas. This tornado is also one of two violent tornadoes, meaning F or E, F4 or 5, to be spawned from a hurricane. 1965 would be the year of the infamous Palm Sunday tornado outbreak. For this year, I'll put down two different events from April 11th, the Southern Elkhart F4, which had 36 fatalities, and the Coldwater Lake to Southern Tecumseh Twins, as they would kill a combined 44. I didn't know which to include, so I'll just mention both. Now, the deadliest tornado from 1966 is the Candlestick Park F5 that occurred on March 3rd of 1966, and it would kill a total of 58 people across a 202-mile-long path from Jackson, Mississippi to Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Moving on to 1967, the deadliest tornado would be the April 21st, 1967 South Chicago, Illinois F4 that killed 33 people across a 15-mile path. 
And for 1968, the deadliest tornado would be the May 15, 1968, Jonesboro, Arkansas, F4, that killed 35 people across a 20-mile-long path of destruction. 1969's deadliest tornado would be the Hazelhurst, Mississippi tornado that would track over 117 miles through central Mississippi on January 22nd of 1969. 1970 would be the year of the May 11th, 1970 Lubbock, Texas F5 that tore an 8-mile path directly through the heart of the city. This tornado would unfortunately result in the deaths of 26 people. 1971 has two tornadoes I want to mention, as on February 21st of 1971, a small but incredibly deadly tornado outbreak would unfold in primarily Mississippi, Arkansas, Louisiana, and Tennessee. This outbreak would produce two especially notable tornadoes. The Waverly, Louisiana to Moorhead, Mississippi F5 that tracked 100 miles across the two states, killing 47. And the other, longer tracked and deadlier tornado would be the Golden Lake, Mississippi to Middleton, Tennessee F4 that would track 202 miles across the two states, killing 58. One thing I couldn't help but notice was the fact that Rolling Fork, Mississippi would barely be in between both of these tornadoes. But enough of 1971, let's move on to 1972, where we have our first tie between the well-known Portland-Vancouver F3 that occurred on April 5th of 1972, and the other tornado would occur on the complete other side of the country in Taylor Creek, Florida on June 18th, where a short-tracked but deadly F2 would kill six people, spawned by Hurricane Agne. But let's move on to 1973, which has another tie. The first is the March 31st, 1973, Aveville, South Carolina, F4, that killed seven. And the second is the Greensboro, Alabama, F4, that occurred on the 27th of May, 1973. It would track for 140 miles through central Alabama, and would also kill seven. But on to 1974, which, to say the least, was a crazy year for tornadoes. Featuring the 1974 super outbreak, which spawned 148 tornadoes in just 24 hours. The deadliest tornado of the outbreak and the year would, unsurprisingly, be the Xenia, Ohio F5. That fun fact, Ted Vegeta debated rating the tornado an F6, but deemed F6 damage to be, quote, inconceivable. But, as its name implies, it would rip directly through the heart of Xenia, Ohio, causing some of the most extreme damage ever documented. This would lead to 36 people losing their lives. But let's move on to a calmer year, and a year with a thankfully significantly lower death count in comparison. 1975. And the deadliest tornado of the year would be the January 10th, 1975, Macomb, Alabama F4, that would kill nine over a 56 mile path. 1976's deadliest tornado was a tornado that would strike Jacksonville and Cabot, Arkansas at F3 intensity over a 17 mile long path on January 29th. Thankfully missing Little Rock Air Force Base near Jacksonville, this tornado could have been a lot worse, and when the tornado struck the city of Cabot, a high school was letting out students at the same time. Thankfully nobody died at the high school, but overall, five people would still die. 1977's deadliest tornado would be one of the many violent tornadoes to strike the city of Birmingham, Alabama, as on April 4th of 1977, this F5 would track through areas north of Birmingham causing 22 fatalities over its almost 15-mile path. 1978 is very interesting with its deadliest tornado, and it helps prove a point. Point being, weak doesn't mean not deadly. As on June 17th of 1978, an F1 tornado would affect areas near Pomona Lake in Kansas. At the same time the tornado was forming, the showboat Whippoorwill left its mooring on the lake, carrying 58 passengers and crew. Eyewitnesses of the disaster stated that they saw the tornado forming at the west end of the lake. The tornado strengthened as it raced towards the boat. The tornado struck the boat and capsized it before moving on to land. In total, 16 people were killed in the incident. For more information about this and an overall look at deadly weak tornadoes, I suggest you check out Swaggle Studios' videos on the deadliest weak tornadoes. 1979, the year of the Wichita Falls, Texas F4 that killed 42 over a 47 mile long path on April 10th, 1979. The Wichita Falls tornado is, for starters, incredibly offsetting as its appearance is so ominous and eerie, but it would cause extreme damage in Wichita Falls, Texas before it would continue to spread its devastation into Oklahoma. 
The deadliest tornado of 1980 would manifest on May 13th of 1980 and would cut a 10 mile path through Kalamazoo, Michigan, killing five and injuring an additional 79. This tornado would be rated F3. 1981's deadliest tornado would occur on the 19th of April and would kill five people in Bixby, Oklahoma at F3 intensity over a 10 mile swath of damage. For 1982, there are two tornadoes that would unfortunately both claim 10 lives. The April 2nd, 1982 Paris, Texas F4, and the Marion, Illinois F4 that occurred on May 29th. And for 1983, the deadliest tornado would be an F3 that would impact areas in and around Inverness, Florida, resulting in three people losing their lives. The deadliest tornado of 1984 would come from the March 28th, 1984 Carolinas outbreak, which spawned 24 tornadoes, including seven F4s, resulting in a total of 57 deaths across the two states. The deadliest of those tornadoes being an F4 that would strike Greenville, North Carolina. It would track for a total of 28 miles, resulting in the deaths of 16 people. 1985's deadliest tornado would be the infamous Niles, Ohio F5 that would sadly end the lives of 18 people. The Niles F5 would be the furthest east tornado rated F5 to ever touch down. It was also a part of the May 31st, 1985 United States to Canada tornado outbreak that would spawn a total of 44 tornadoes, which, as its name implies, across Canada and the U.S. The deadliest tornado of 1986 is similar to that of 1964's, as an F2 tornado would track just 1.5 miles through Jacksonville, North Carolina, unfortunately killing three. 1987 has two tornadoes that I will be talking about. The first, and the deadliest on the year, is the 1987 Saragossa, Texas tornado that hit the community of Saragossa in Reeves County, Texas on May 22nd of 1987. The tornado destroyed much of the town, killing at least 30 and injuring over 100 people. During this tornado, a warning was issued 26 minutes prior to the tornado hitting, yet residents never knew it was coming. Weatherbox has a video on it that I highly recommend you watch. The second tornado I'm mentioning is the deadliest tornado in Canadian history, being the July 31st, 1987 Edmonton, Alberta F4 that would cut 22 miles through Alberta's capital with estimated winds of 418 kilometers an hour, or 260 miles per hour. These winds would unfortunately result in 27 people losing their lives. Amongst Edmontonians, this day is known as Black Friday. Somewhat oddly enough, as I write the script for this video, Another EF4 has touched down in the province of Alberta, making it the first tornado in Alberta to be rated F or EF4 since Black Friday 36 years ago. On the 15th of November 1988, a tornado outbreak spawned 44 tornadoes, including three F3s. The deadliest tornado of the outbreak in the year would be an F2 that tracked 49 miles south of Little Rock, Arkansas, killing five people. The next year, 1989, would see its deadly tornado on the 15th of November also, as on that day in 1989, an F4 would track 19 miles through southern portions of Huntsville, Alabama, killing 21. But an even more tragic event would occur the next day in New York State on November 16th in Coldenham, New York, near the town of Newburgh, when at approximately 12.30 p.m. Eastern Time, a suspected F1 tornado blew down a freestanding cafeteria wall, tragically killing 9 students and injuring 18 others. Though the event was officially recorded as a tornado, conclusive evidence from a survey team led by Ted Fujita and others indicates that it was a downburst and said, but a tornado or not, nine students with bright futures lost their lives and were taken way too soon from this world. As we move on to 1990, the deadliest tornado of the year would be the iconic, unworn disaster that is the Plainfield, Illinois F5. The Plainfield tornado occurred on the afternoon of Tuesday, August 28, 1990. The violent tornado killed 29 people and injured 353. It is the only F5 slash EF5 rated tornado to ever occur in August in the United States, and is the only F5 tornado to strike the Chicago area. Since there was never a tornado warning for the storm, people had no idea they needed to take shelter until it was too late, resulting in a depressingly high death count. It should be no surprise that 1991's deadliest tornado is the April 29, 1991 Andover, Kansas F-5 that would kill 17. This tornado would impact the McConnell Air Force Base in Andover, and it would become an incredibly documented tornado with lots of footage and photos, especially for its era. 
Shortly after the Andover tornado, another tornado rated F2 would track across areas near the Kansas Turnpike, and this tornado would spawn the overpass tornado myth. November 21st of 1992 would be the day that spawned the deadliest tornado of 1992, as an F4 tornado would create a windy 128-mile path through central Mississippi, striking the town of Brandon, Mississippi, unfortunately killing 10 people. 1993's deadliest tornado would be an F4 that would strike Catoosa, Oklahoma on April 24th of 1993, sadly killing seven. 1994 would be the year of the second Palm Sunday outbreak, as on March 27th of 1994, 29 tornadoes would touch down from Texas to North Carolina, killing 40 people and injuring 491. The deadliest tornado of the outbreak, as well as in the U.S. in 1994, was an F4 tornado that devastated Piedmont, Alabama. It struck the Goshen United Methodist Church right in the middle of the Palm Sunday service, collapsing the roof on the congregation and killing 20 people inside. Two other houses of worship were also destroyed mid-service. Tragically, a total of 22 people would lose their life in the tornado over its 50-mile-long path. On February 16th of 1995, an F3 tornado killed six people and injured 130 in Arab, Alabama, making it the tornado responsible for the most deaths in 1995. 1996's deadliest tornado would be on the 14th of April, 1966, as an F4 tornado killed seven people in Stone and Izzard counties in Arkansas. But for globally, we all know about the May 13th, 1996 Bangladesh F4 that would kill 700 people. Like I said, I'm just covering North American tornadoes, but I couldn't go without at least mentioning this tornado because of how high the death count is. 1997. You already know the tornado. For those who are unaware, it is obviously the Gerald Texas F5 that occurred on the 27th of May, 1997. The Gerald tornado would track just 7.5 miles, but it would create the most horrifying and extreme damage ever created. It would wipe homes completely off their foundation, leaving just a bare slab. It would granulate debris. It would carve deep trenches into the ground, rip asphalt off roads and plumbing out of the ground, causing 27 people to lose their lives in this tragic freak event. The deadliest tornado of 1998 is the underrated April 8, 1998 deadly F5 that tore through the suburbs of Birmingham, Alabama, killing 32 people. The tornado would injure an additional 259 over its 30 mile path. 1999 is another entry that won't surprise literally anybody, as the deadliest tornado of 1999 would be the May 3rd Bridge Creek Moor F5 that would track 37 miles through the OKC Metro, killing 36. This tornado would possess the strongest winds ever recorded on Earth, and these winds are sadly represented in the damage and the death count. And unfortunately, this wouldn't be the last time Moor would see a deadly F5 tornado. The deadliest tornado of the start of the 21st century is a Canadian tornado, being the Pine Lake F3 tornado, which was a deadly tornado in central Alberta, which occurred on Friday, July 14, 2000, and struck a campground and a trailer park. Twelve people were killed, making it the first deadly tornado in Canada since 1987 with Black Friday. It also raises a good point with the whole mobile homes and tornadoes thing. Mobile homes are terrible places to ride out tornadoes, even weaker tornadoes. And when you have a significant tornado, like the Pine Lake Tornado being an F3, a disaster is just waiting to happen. And it did, in this instance, with 12 people losing their lives. The deadliest tornado of 2001 is the Pontotoc, Mississippi F3 that would impact the town over its 52-mile path. This tornado would unfortunately kill 6 people. The deadliest tornado of 2002 would come from the Veterans Day weekend tornado outbreak that would spawn 76 tornadoes from the 9th to the 11th of November 2002. The most well-known tornado of the outbreak would be the Van Wer EF4, but it was not the deadliest of the outbreak. The deadliest would be an F3 that would track 72 miles through northern Alabama. Close to 500 structures were damaged or destroyed and hundreds of trees were downed by this long track tornado. A total of 53 people were injured and sadly, seven people were killed. For 2003, the deadliest tornado would be the Jackson, Tennessee F4 that would track 39 miles, striking the city. 2004's deadliest tornado would be the April 20th, 2004 North Utica, Illinois F3 that sadly killed eight people over a 15 mile path. 2005's is the November 5th, 2005 Evansville, Indiana F3 that killed 24. 
the deadliest tornado of 2006 would be the April 2nd, 2006 Templeton, Tennessee F3 that would track 18 miles through West Tennessee, unfortunately resulting in 16 fatalities. Moving on to 2007, the deadliest tornado should be a surprise to nobody as it's the nighttime EF5 monster that is the Greensburg tornado. During the evening of May 4, 2007, a tornado touched down south of the town of Greensburg, Kansas, and over the following minutes, it would grow to a 1.7 mile wide monster that was bigger than the town itself, and inside that 1.7 mile wide funnel were winds of EF5 intensity. As a result, the town of Greensburg was swallowed by the tornado and obliterated. 95% of Greensburg would be destroyed, and tragically, 11 people would lose their lives. But, as we move on to 2008, the deadliest tornado would, unsurprisingly, come from the 2008 Super Tuesday tornado outbreak. The outbreak as a whole would consist of 87 tornadoes. One of those would be an EF3 that would strike the towns of Lafayette and Tompkinsville over a 50-mile path through Tennessee and Kentucky. This tornado would be responsible, however, for the deaths of 22. 2009's deadliest tornado would be the Lone Grove, Oklahoma EF4, as on the 10th of February 2009, this multi-vortex tornado would track 37 miles through Texas and Oklahoma, striking the small town of Lone Grove, Oklahoma, killing eight people. 2010's deadliest tornado is the relatively unknown Yazoo City EF4 that tracked 150 miles through Louisiana and Mississippi, most notably striking Yazoo City at EF4 intensity, killing 10. 2011 might be the most unsurprising and devastating so far, as it is somewhat predictably the devastating Joplin, Missouri EF5 that occurred on May 22nd of 2011. The EF5 tornado would begin just west of Joplin and would intensify very quickly, reaching a maximum width of nearly one mile wide during its path through the southern part of the city. The tornado tracked eastward through Joplin and then continued across I-44 into rural portions of Jasper and Newton counties, weakening before it dissipated. It would leave incredible widespread damage throughout the south side of the city, causing $2.8 billion in damages. Adjusting for inflation, this number is close to $3.6 billion in 2023. The rain wrap feature of this tornado, its intensity, and people not heeding the warnings resulted in a tragic loss of life. In total, 158 people would lose their lives as a result of the tornado, and 9 would die of indirect causes. The Joplin tornado would become the deadliest tornado since 1947 in the United States, and would end up as the costliest tornado in U.S. history. But, moving on to 2012, we have a comparatively better year, but the 11 fatalities caused by the Henryville, Indiana EF4 on March 22, 2012, is still 11 too many. This multi-vortex tornado would track 50 miles through Indiana and Kentucky, striking the towns of New Pekin, Henryville, and Marysville. The worst damage would be in Henryville, as 11 people would die, however no injuries were reported. The next year being 2013 is a no-brainer, and it is the May 20th, 2013 War Oklahoma EF5. On the afternoon of May 20th, 2013, a large and extremely violent EF5 tornado ravaged through Moore, Oklahoma, and adjacent areas, with peak winds estimated at 210 miles per hour, killing 24 people and injuring 212 others. The tornado touched down just northwest of Newcastle and stayed on the ground for 39 minutes over a 17-mile path, crossing through heavily populated sections of Moore. The tornado was a little over a mile wide at its peak, and this tornado would be extremely reminiscent of the previously mentioned Bridge Creek Moore F5 from 1999. This sentiment would be echoed on the weather broadcast by Mike Morgan to put into terms how dire the situation was as the tornado was unfolding and grinding its way through Moore. The deadliest tornado of 2014 would be deadly and controversial. This being the Mayflower Valonia, Arkansas EF4 that occurred on the 27th of April 2014. This tornado would travel 41 miles through central Arkansas, striking the town of Mayflower and bulldozing the town of Valonia, unfortunately resulting in 16 people being killed. The damage in and around Valonia was read at EF4 with estimated winds of 190 miles an hour which has sparked a lot of controversy surrounding its rating in recent years. But that isn't the topic of the video, so let's move on to the next year, being 2015, where the deadliest tornado would be the December 26, 2015 Garland, Texas EF4 that tracked 13 miles through eastern portions of Dallas, Texas before crossing over and dissipating on Lake Hubbard. In total, the tornado would kill 10 people. 
2016's deadliest tornado would come on the 29th of November of that year, as a powerful EF3 tornado ripped directly through the town of Rosalie and to the north of Eider, Alabama, killing four people and injuring nine others. 2017's deadliest tornado would be the Barney Adele, Georgia EF3 that occurred on the 21st of January of 2017, and would track 25 miles through southern Georgia, killing 11. 2018 is the best year so far, as the deadliest tornado would be an EF1 that tracked 2.7 miles through Baltimore, Maryland, killing two people, the lowest yet. Now, that's still two lives and two families that are forever changed, and that shouldn't be looked over. But comparatively speaking, it was a good year. For 2019, the deadliest tornado would be the Smith Station, Alabama EF4 that killed 23 people over a 68-mile path through Alabama and Georgia. But also in 2019, there was an EF4 in Havana, Cuba. This EF4 would track 12.8 miles through Cuba's capital, killing eight people before moving out into the Atlantic Ocean. This tornado would have estimated winds of 185 miles an hour, and was the first F or EF4 tornado in Cuba since 1940. Somewhat surprisingly, the deadliest tornado of 2020 is not the Bassfield Sosa EF4. It is in the downtown Nashville EF3 but is instead the Cookville, Tennessee EF4 that touched down following the downtown Nashville EF3. This tornado would track through the Tara Estates just west of Cookville, Tennessee, at EF4 strength, causing intense damage and killing 19 people before dissipating after entering Cookville. The deadliest tornado of 2021 is one I really shouldn't have to explain at this point, but it is the December 10, 2021 Mayfield, Kentucky EF4 that tracked almost 170 miles through Tennessee and Kentucky more notably impacting Mayfield, Benton, Princeton, and many other towns and communities. Over its very long path, this nighttime monster would kill 58 people and injure 515 in the darkness of the night. Moving on to 2022, the deadliest tornado would be the Winterset, Iowa tornado that occurred on the 5th of March, 2022. This long-tracked, low-end EF4 tornado caused major damage near the towns of Winterset and Norwalk, resulting in six fatalities. This tornado would be on the ground for a whopping 95 minutes, and over that period of time, it would slash a 70-mile path of carnage through the populated region of Iowa. And finally, as of the time I'm writing this video in July of 2023, the deadliest tornado of 2023 is the Rolling Fork, Mississippi EF4. During the evening of the 24th of March, 2023, a violent tornado would touch down near the Mississippi River, and over the next 71 minutes, it would travel 60 miles, obliterating the town of Rolling Fork, Mississippi, at high-end EF4 intensity, before moving through the community of Midnight, followed by Silver City, leading to even more damage. In aggregate, 17 people would be killed by this tornado, and 165 would be injured. The tornado would be rated EF4, with estimated winds of 195 miles per hour. And at the time I make this video, it is the deadliest tornado of 2023. So there you have it. Um, the deadliest tornado of every year from 1950 all the way to 2023. If you did enjoy the video, then consider subscribing. As this video took a very long time to create, so I would really appreciate it. Also, I just want to say thank you for 3,000 subscribers and all the support recently. But, uh, yeah, have a nice rest of your day, and I will see you next week, hopefully. Um, goodbye.